Hello, this is Tom Morello. This is the latest Night Watchman Speaks episode. I am the Night Watchman. You submit your questions via nightwatchandmusic.com, and I do my best to answer them. Once again, broadcasting from a secret location somewhere in Los Angeles because I am up to no good. Here we go. Uh, question number one. Uh, Hi, Tom. The album version of the song Sleep Now in the Fire has an ending that sounds nothing like anything that could have been made on guitar. Yet all of your Rage and Audio Slave albums clearly state that all of the sounds on the album were produced by guitar, drums, vocals, and bass. Where did the ending from Sleep Now in the Fire come from? Well, as a matter of fact, it was created by guitar. Um, what you're referring to is it was it's a K Korean radio station that was picked up via my guitar and amp from somewhere in the studio and when we finished the last chords of Sleep Now in the Fire it just was blaring through the guitar amplifier and we just thought it was pretty trippy and left it in the that song has a unique following in Korea where I don't know exactly what is being said on the thing but it has been noticed there and um, while those are not notes strummed or played on the guitar they certainly were recorded at exactly the same time we were recording the basic tracks for Sleep Now in the Fire via the guitar and the curious signals coming through the amplifier. Next question. Hi Tom, I have some guitar related questions. Despite the fact I'm a drummer and a big fan of Brad Wilk, I'm always curious about other instruments, gear, material, etc. Here it is. How did you come up with the drop B tuning in Audio Slave? It's not the real drop B as only the first string is down tuned, but the sound it gave on Gasoline, Shadow in the Sun, and The Worm is really ballsy. I just love it. So how did you come up with the idea? Did you think that bizarre but heavy sound could be compatible, hypothetically speaking, on a future Rage song? Uh, I have a clue. Rusty Cage, one of Soundgarden's coolest masterpieces, is tuned like that. Maybe Chris or the song gave you the idea. Well, I mean, once guitarists in the grunge era began tuning down to D, it was only a matter of time before the tuning went even lower. And a lot of those super duper heavy bands that play, you know, 19 string guitars, they play in keys much lower than that. But I thought I want, I'd try something different for, for Audio Slave rather than just going to the regular drop D tuning that a lot of the Rage songs are in and go to drop B. I had to use a, a Les Paul guitar for that with a really heavy B string on it so it would stay in tune. But it's certainly not nothing that I invented. Um, uh, there's some Sabbath songs that have drop B tuning on them as well from the 70s as, as well but uh, um, you know it just the idea it sort of it changes the way that you look at the instrument changes the way that you know the same fingering sounds very different when it's tuned low like that and the songs that you mentioned uh, Gasoline Shadow in the Sun and The Worm really are indeed ballsy because of it uh, but there you go next question your music is full of meaning and symbolism. You walk the talk and understand things on a deeper level. Thank you very much. From your boots, hats, t-shirts, and necklaces to your home decor, you wear your beliefs on your sleeve. That's Maybe I should change some of this stuff. That being said, do you have any tattoos? And if so, what are they and what do they mean? If you don't want tattoo, would you... If you don't, what tattoo would you get and why? I am completely tattoo-free. I am untattooed and unpierced. Uh, I guess it was, uh, you know, it was not really like a, any sort of philosophical decision, but uh, I thought as a young man when friends were beginning to get ears pierced and noses pierced and tongues pierced and back tats and things like that, um, that I really couldn't think of something that I was willing to commit to on my body for eternity, uh, and so I would just keep a clean slate and... Uh, among rockers, that is fairly unusual, but um, unusual is my business, and business is good. Uh, n next question. Knowing that your mother is a teacher, as am I, how do you feel about the attacks on teachers and their unions? I'm going to a rally in Toronto on Tuesday to protest anti-union, anti-teacher legislation that's being introduced on Monday. I'll be bringing my guitar. We'll be playing songs from Joe Hill, Woody Guthrie, Bruce Springsteen, and yourself. If you could be there, what song would be your first choice to play? Well, that's an easy one. First of all, I salute you and teachers standing up for their rights. My, I mean, as a, as a kid, one reason why my family had, uh, as a single parent family, uh, uh, you know, my mom was a public high school teacher, a union public high school teacher. One of the reasons why we were able to have food on our table and medical insurance was because my, because of the hard fought victories of teachers unions, uh, in the United States, especially in Chicago, they're trying to uh, strip those rights away and try to break the teachers union there. So I always stand up for uh, 
my mom and for teachers unions everywhere, including those in Toronto. If I was at your rally, what song would I play? Well, the two songs that would come first to mind would be um, a song called Union Song off the One Man Revolution record, a song I've played at many union rallies. It was written for days like the ones that the one that you're headed into. Uh, there's another song called Union Town from the Union Town EP that I wrote um, in response to my visits to Madison, Wisconsin during the Union Uprising there um, a year ago, February. So those would be two excellent jams to pick out, but uh, really anything from the Joe Hill, Woody Guthrie, Bruce Springsteen, or Night Watchman catalog would probably sound pretty good on that day. Uh, one last suggestion for you would be a song called Worldwide Rebel Songs. Uh, one thing I remind uh, friends, fans, and fellow union members at, uh, at rallies that I perform is that, you know, everywhere I travel, it's like, um, people, union people have each other's backs and let you know that union people here in Los Angeles and in Chicago have your backs in Chicago, in Toronto. Um, and that's, uh, one thing we've got going for us is we've got each other's backs. So, all right. Thank you very much. This has been the latest episode of The Night Watchman Speaks from a hidden secret undisclosed location in Los Angeles. Uh, you can go to nightwatchmanmusic.com to submit questions for future editions of this program. Uh, and I look forward to reading them and answering them. Thank you very much. Adios, people.